So that means we have the different units and you know how to convert them, how to shuffle them, how to convert them from one unit to another unit. So this is the second property we will be taking into the consideration while studying the gas laws that is the pressure of the gas. Now you all know that what is actually the pressure is, how, why the gas is exerting the pressure, what is the cause behind it, what is the term atmospheric pressure means, what are those instruments doing, the manometer and the barometer, how they are working, what are the units we are using and how we can convert them. So taking into the consideration the third property that is the temperature of the gas. So now coming to the point temperature, you are familiar from the this thing, uh, from the uh, last few classes you know that what actually the temperature is, it is just the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. Am I right? You know that? What is temperature? It is just the uh, this thing, temperature is just the degree of hotness or coldness of body, how hotter the body is or how cooler the body is that indicates the temperature. So we have different scales for calculating the temperature in case of any uh, you can say state we are taking into consideration whether it is solid, liquid and gas. So similarly for gas we have the same scales that is the Farad scale, the Kelvin say scale and the degree Celsius scale and you know this that this is uh, this is invented by Lord Kelvin. We will be taking into this uh, consideration the scale that how the scale was invented and what actually the scale is when we will be talking of the second law that is the Charles law. So for this moment you should know that there is a scale called as Kelvin scale which is called as absolute scale of temperature and what is the reason behind we will be taking up in the Charles law and how these scales are interconverted. So whenever you have, uh, you have a temperature in degree Celsius, like if I say there is a temperature of 15 degree Celsius, you get uh, you want it to convert into the Kelvin scale. So just add 273 to it and you will get a result in the Kelvin. So that means whenever degree Celsius temperature is to be converted into Kelvin, just add 273 into it and the opposite if you are subtracting the 273 from Kelvin you get the result in the degree Celsius. So how these uh, these uh, like the scales can be interconverted from one scale to another scale but otherwise the SI unit the absolute scale which is used is Kelvin scale. So it is better that when, whether you, when you are performing the numericals so just take the temperature into the Kelvin by converting the degree Celsius by adding just 273 to it. Right. So the third property also we are done with it, you know the terms now, mass, pressure and temperature and the volume, when we are talking about the volume of gas, as I told you before that the gases do neither have definite shape nor definite volume. So they just take up the volume of the container in which you keep it. So that means the volume of this container I have taken will be equal to the volume of the gas it is, it is just having it because the gas occupies the space completely. So volume of the container indicate the volume of the gas and again the units which are used for it is liters. 1 liter is equal to 1 decimeter cube is equal to 1000 centimeter cube. Again you should know the relation between these units because in numericals you get to convert these units. So you should be familiar with the terms and the conversions and the relation they have. So similarly 1 decimeter cube consists of 1000 centimeter cube and 1 centimeter cube corresponds to 1 milliliter. So these are the units in which we can again 1 liter is equal to 1000 ml you know that. So these are the different units which uh, will be using while calculating the volume of the gas.